Ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 30 years of Muspel. Yes, How man. does it feel? I don't know, man. It's um, for musicians. Time is um, quite um, runs different runs differently than from other people. Sometimes we just measure our personal lives and everything that happened to us through the albums. We're not like remember in '96. No, we say remember a religious time. So I don't know. It's <laughs> after all that happens. And um, I think a lot has changed and a lot has remained the same. We're still the same struggling band, you know, trying to impose our music out there with our good and bad um, moments. It feels, sometimes it feels very special that we reached 30 years old. Sometimes it feels like nothing at all. So, yeah, it's it's the typical, uh, you know... Uh, Back and forth. Uh, Moonspell... Uh, uh, dark humor and dark view perspective about uh, uh, things, but I'm glad we reach here. It's 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 a beautiful date, 30 years uh, when we first formed and played together with Morbid Gods. I think there will be like a 30 second career, mm-hmm. not 30 years. But um, I'm um, happy, but at the same time I'm anxiously uh, and eagerly uh, thinking about move, moving forward with next. With you know, get rid of the celebrations of the 30 years, start playing a def- different repertoire, you know, 30 years of pure insatisfaction. So for a moment, <laughs> for a moment, I thought you were saying, ah, let's let's call it a day and maybe I will keep only writing uh, books. One day that will happen. Maybe. I mean, it will, of, it will. Yeah, a lot of people think this is forever. I never thought this is forever. Music is forever. Music is forever, yeah, but that's a little bit uh, above our pay grade. You know, the posterity. Connect, depends connect. Depends what people will do with it, you know. There's many bands that um, uh, were important and that nowadays people just forgot about them. You know, not all the people, but... Uh, no, no, you are, you are absolutely correct. And I think as we, the fans, have become... Are, we are a little bit selfish. Everybody's because selfish. Let me <laughs> explain <laughs> what I'm trying to say, that... We want to keep the band as it was when we are younger. So when a band that we knew when we were younger goes away, it's like we lost part of our yeah. you know, our energy, our life. Or even life. when the band evolves. Right? It's the same thing. Yeah. But, but I, that's not putting pressure no, on no, the musician. No, no, no. I mean, right? I was born under pressure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the thing is that I, I see what you're saying, but... Um, I also feel that as a music fan, but I do not blame it on the bands. I no, 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 no. I blame it to the fact that we missed when we were younger, a little bit happier, yeah. yes. and uh, I don't know, more well put together, not so many heartbreaking, not so many confusions. Worries, less stress. Not, not such a fucked up world as it is today. And we kind of missed that. And as mu- music was a soundtrack for that, Correct. we kind of connect the dots. And sometimes people are just disappointed. In the end of the day, we always had this discussion with Moonspell and the fans, and uh, it's a big fucking waste of time because um, I mean, uh, if I if you knew if I knew that you know the first two albums will be so successful, probably we would have embraced the career in another way and say, all right, let's leave. And we did already did Wolf the Religious. We already wrote our own little Portuguese chapter in the history of metal or whatever. But then again, when I think about it, if we had just uh, bended the knee to the fans' wishes of Wolf Art and New Religious, we'll uh, have done songs like Nocturna or Breathe Until We Are No More or Future Is Dark or Memorial Songs or even Hermitage. So um, even though it's painful, I'm glad that we could manage somehow this... Um, you know, backlash that we had, especially after seeing Pecado, it was never the same to us. The people are very divided. But honestly, you say fans are selfish. I say, like any other person yeah, in the selfish. world, the fans don't know what they want. You know, True. you want True. everything. You like Portuguese people. We want this, but we don't want it. It's <laughs> like I explained Portuguese and maybe Greek are a little bit like this. You know, we are that happy we are about American. this, but we, we don't give a shit about that. So it's... Um, it's complicated, but it's, it's, it's music, it's painful somehow, but uh, I mean, uh, we're not only here to enjoy ourselves, we try to, it's very important, but uh, sometimes, yeah, it gets ugly with the fans and with the backlash and people saying that we suck now, but then in a few years, 
they will say Hermitage is a masterpiece. So we kind of got used to the dynamics, and um, that's not what's going to bring us down. So, that's for sure. Fernando, are, are you? Not I'm like, not bitter about it. No, really. I'm not saying bitter. Yeah. Um, after all these years, um, you have to follow what the band has to follow, whatever feels good about the band, right? So, do yeah. you feel not any regrets? I want to say, do you give? <laughs> Shouldn't you give a damn about these things, about the backlash or the action? Or I mean, you should do whatever it feels good yeah, for you. I say it won't bring us down, but it's, it's not black or white. Of course, I don't, leave, I don't wake up thinking about the backlash, but it's also not, not, and everybody that says the opposite is lying or she's lying. It's not that we don't care at all. Even like the bigger bands that have a lot of money in their pockets that don't need to tour they anymore. They have the managers to worry about that stuff. You no, know, but you know, nowadays people... When I didn't like a band in the 80s or in the 90s, there was nothing I can do about it. I didn't like the band, I didn't go come to the shows. Nowadays, right. you know, people want to be in control of everything. <laughs> so yes. they go, I have seen Marilyn Manson, before he got cancelled, answering to the fans or getting into the into discussion. It's something that we have to learn. Don't forget we are not like the new generation, we are the older generation. The, the way we communicated music when we started had nothing to do with today's, Correct. you know. Um, we were discovering stuff. It was a more um, genuine and authentic, and that's what keeps uh, Moonspell happy and together. Is that whatever the backlash was, whatever the the business was, praise or hate, those were not the factors that were determining our music ever. Great. You know, we always could um, understand and not be angry or frustrated about it because people have the right not to like your music. Whatever they do with it, then you know it can become ugly or not. But that's not up to us, really. So whenever Moonspell has always been like um, a band of the spirit of the time, like the Zeitgeist, whatever we listen to, whatever we are reading, whatever we are uh, feeling or living, that ends up in our music mm -hmm. somehow. You know that's why the albums are a bit different because we don't not feel the same all the time. As far as the public response go, I mean, I've seen everything written about Moonspell <laughs> and nothing of it is absolutely truth. We're not like this genius big band, but also we're not a bunch of losers from Portugal. So in, I know that in the polarized world, it's yes or no or black or white, but I think most of the human understanding and music and art and what makes us less miserable, it's in the middle. And people just forgot about hanging out in the middle. They just like to be... You know, sometimes it's funny because um, we had situations where people wrote us something very aggressive and we just sort of to chill down. I don't do this anymore. I don't have time for this. But me or the webmaster, whatever they call now. And honestly, they just want attention. When they get any, even an automated response, they are all happy. Like, I hate you. Thanks for your message. All right, you guys are cool. <laughs> Isn't so, it strange yeah. that nowadays we have so many means to communicate, but still we polarize, as you said. It's not so anything in between. You have to be this and or we that. And lose the purpose of communicating. I mean, that was exactly. our choice. I mean, you, uh, we had many opportunities for many things. To live in peace, to live in harmony, to stop the hunger, you know, to worry about the planets and ourselves and the people we, we elect to represent us. We know what we know what to do. We know what's left to be done. We even know how much it costs, but we simply don't want to do it. Yeah, because so, it's hard. So um, that's maybe our fate and our destiny and our, and our curse that uh, we actually could go the wrong, the right way, but there's something inside us, or inside all of us, that, no, I'm going to do this and deal with the consequence. So it's obvious that one of the biggest uh, lost opportunities of the past few years was the internet. But also oh, it depends yeah. on you. I mean, I go, there was a time I didn't have any social networking, but then I started to doing a lot of stuff outside Moonspell and I didn't want to use the Moonspell accounts just for my stuff, for my books, for my music consulting, for the brand I'm going to, you know, for my stuff. So, um, because I didn't have the temper to be on social networks, I didn't like the story, I didn't like the bullshit, I didn't like what people I feel wrote. you, I feel you. So, <laughs> I understand it's a powerful tool, but I understand it's not the holy tool. You know, sometimes you have like an um, event 
and thousands of people are going to they do the re R V S yeah 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 but they don't show they up. They don't show up. Internet, don't forget, it's um, it's a lot of fiction. It's a make believe so, world. Yeah. So when you meet people face to face, and I don't know, I, I I still try to surround myself. I'm not like old school. I mean, I have an iPhone somewhere, and I have a computer, <laughs> and I have of even. Um, but I, I'm simply not um, interested in uh, spending my life there. You know, for instance, my wife, she's a big Instagram. Um, she has like hundred and something thousand. Oh, wow. And she goes there and sometimes I come home and say, do you know what happened to me? And said, no, is everything all right, baby? Oh, this guy on Instagram said, sorry, I haven't seen it. You know, and <laughs> not because I'm ignoring her life, but because I'm going to be home and she's going to tell me about it. Right. You know, and right. then I see it and say, ah. <laughs> forget about it. There's more to live into it. So, yeah, I think people use... It's like fire. You can use it to, you know, to cook, cook and then you can use to the boil burn. water, or you can burn. The, you can have a forest fire, like in Greece and in, in Portugal. You know? Oh man! So um, if we can do anything about it, when I studied philosophy, I thought so. All the philosophy points that way. Nowadays, I don't think so. I, think I are, am so of the yeah. same page. I think uh, we I are beyond we're past, any yeah. fixing. Yes, yes, <laughs> and. Uh, I, I remember vividly uh, during uh, the pandemic, uh, the, the first lockdowns, everybody was saying, we will look inside, we will become better. No. Do, you, do you believe it? No. I we, never believed it. It's quite the opposite. Yeah, of course. We have when, we have uh, exit that forest to enter a thicker forest. Yeah. And and we, are ins- we still have no idea, only a few years from now, about the real cost. Correct. Costs. I mean, I don't, I don't this guy. I had four um, vaccine shots. There was a lot of polemics everywhere. But I did like I do everything in my life. I said, I have to work. I have to take these shots. I hope yep. I don't die. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but I trust the scientists. So I took the, the shots and I never got involved into this discussion of... Um, it was a big mess in Portugal. I was expecting more, of course. I'm I think everywhere. Of course I'm expecting more because we pay all these taxes. We give all this money for the society and for the health system, especially in Europe. And um, then something come up and we are totally helpless, totally helpless. We don't know what to do. We were like running uh, like headless chicken, you know, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. what I thought. And I was like people saying, oh, what do you think about the pandemics? As a musician, um, what I really hated was bands that came online. Many bands said, oh, I'm glad to welcome this break. See, it was not a break. The world doesn't revolve about you touring or not touring, or if you're tired of touring or not. This was a fucking calamity. Even if it wasn't like probably the pandemics that half of the population, like uh, you know, Thanos just snapped his fingers and half of... It was something that really affected us. And not only in a sanitary way, but it has uh, provoked it. If the world was, I would say, polarized, then it Fucking pulverized yes, yes, everybody. Yes, yes. We we seen things in Portugal like me not wearing a mask and some guy telling on me and right, right, the fuck, and man? people and fighting people, for for the and numbers and fixing and one day it was something, the other day was other things. So it was some um, um, hard times to live by. But uh, it wasn't about us. It wasn't about us not touring. It was a, I mean what I tried um, to do is that I knew it wouldn't be so simple to resolve. Because nowadays it's pretty obvious that um, the ones in power are constructing or betting in a some kind of world where most of us have no saying or do not belong. So that's why the pandemic solution was so limited and the speech was so limited to a certain number of individuals. Like everybody was a health specialist. My neighbor was a health specialist, even though. She is a Portuguese teacher or whatever, yes, you know, yes. so it was, it was ugly to see, yeah. And I don't think ugly. we have seen the full effect. No. Uh, Maybe in even in, in the music, right? I, I'm oh. sh- everybody's saying that it has become so expensive, even for bands going from the US to, the, to Europe and then, of yeah, course. lots of cancellations. I mean, being here is a miracle. This is the slowest tour we had in the States, but we didn't want to let, um, let it go. And we wanted to come here, and uh, we had the Swallow the Sun uh, Municipal Tour um, right. cancelled. I didn't want to, people to uh, hold to the tickets. I said, it's cancelled, let's try to book another tour. 
Because I don't want people to have an, a municipal ticket on the fridge and then uh, 30 others. You know, that's not fair for them. Yeah. So I think this is the slowest, the, the, the worst turnouts we ever had in the States, which was never our main um, territory. But on the other hand, I feel this is something we have to do. Because the it hasn't bounced back. And the way it bounced back, it's it, it kind of imitates the world. There are a few bands that have teamed up, for instance, like with Live Nation, and they are creating like a structure mm -hmm. that kind of repels all the middle of the road bands. So those those are are full. Those have good promotion. Everything else, it's struggling. Everybody's struggling. The other day, Dark Funeral, like we got downgrade yesterday in Kansas for a smaller, uh, less expensive uh, venue. We happy the same with Dark Funeral. And, we can talk about it. I'm very cool of talking about it because, I mean, um, um, success or the lack of it, it's something that you have to be ready with uh, for. Well, it's not... I don't think it, you, a municipal did not have a following in the U.S. because you were doing extremely well. I think the fact that we have so many yeah, that's true, shows yeah. and people... Let's face it, they don't have the, the, the enough no, they money have, to go everywhere. No, they don't have. And I mean, so have, this hurts everyone. We have to understand that. I mean... Compared to Europe, the, the U.S. is always a hard nut to crack. But um, it's also our kind of music, you know, because who else is doing this? You know, mm. it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard not to find, to find bands to match. We are not a symphonic metal band. We could match with Catatonia, Zoan, etc. But we're not so progressive. So we kind of we have our own thing going. And sometimes um, it's, it's difficult because it's just a niche. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, what can I say? I mean, we are here and every day it's, it's, it's our job, especially after the pandemics. I had all this, uh, like, yeah, we are artists and we do art. Maybe, but um, right now what's, what's important is to entertain people, really. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, because people come to the show with their expectations. They don't want to see me, me musing about the lack of numbers or my life or the internet. They True, just but at the same the time, this is something we have to, to speak about. We don't pretend that everything is... Yeah, on interviews, yeah. yeah, but not on stage. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, are there... Have you started yeah, thinking that's... about the next Moonspell album? Yes, yes and no. Um, <laughs> I mean, we're always talking about new music. New music for bands, at least, it's very important. And Hermitage was an album that suffered a lot from being under the COVID context. We, knew, we never could play it, really. That's why we did also the live album at the Caves. But um, we've been touring a lot, you know. And we, it's our second month on tour because we've been in Mexico, Latin America. We've been a little bit everywhere because things open. They still haven't bounced back completely, but no. then they kind of they kind of open. So I have a lot in my mind, really. When I come back home, because I don't want to uh, work hard with Moons, but I want to work smart. You know what I mean? Yep. So I want to use time in our favor. Uh, I mean, we've always been a, very different from the other bands, and sometimes our decisions don't make sense in a business perspective, but we kind of don't care because we're not here to take over the world or to be rich we understand we try <laughs> we haven't <laughs> so i think i wanted to make an album in 2024 but i think the band as it is now it's not prepared in okay. my opinion we gotta grease the wheels like yeah we gotta take a step back just um you know write songs write a lot of songs just um work with no pressure of course we will do something in between mm -hmm. we still don't know what because we have to survive but we will mostly be like playing portugals or the theaters or pick up the acoustic thing we did and do some stuff um uh, we did but um, yeah i'm thinking of making two albums really if i can make them simultaneously it will be wonderful two albums with moonspell yeah okay one in english and one in portuguese mm -hmm. in english i already have a lot of ideas um in Portuguese, I have a lot of ideas too, but um, you know, it takes a little bit of the con convincing too because I think I want to make like uh, the new album of Moonspell a very simple, straightforward album full of good songs, uh, whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but for the for the um, 
for the um, Portuguese album, I like to go into again to some kind of dark folk, but not Viking folk, because mm-hmm. I had enough of that. They all sound the same, and it's very limited. And in the south of Europe, in Portugal, Spain, north of Africa, Morocco, even in Brazil, we have this kind of um, you know um, how can I say imaginary, you know the folk things, the folk legends, the oh, folk music. Yes. Yes. I would like to flirt a little bit with it. Also with the north of Spain, Gallegos, they are amazing. So I'm thinking about this. But for this I need um, um, I need more time. And sincerely, to be on the road again, just for the sake of it, to release a new album, just to initiate sure, a yeah, new yeah. cycle, it's not something that we are no, it, make, at it least makes interested in total that. sense. Total we'll sense. have to fight a lot with the label and with the agents and the promoters. But in the end of the day, what's the history of Moonspell in 30 years? For the good or for the bad, we always did what the fuck we wanted to. <laughs> so, and that's why we... And make... sometimes we were naive, sometimes... But, you know, time is always like, for instance, people now... Today we're going to play a Butterfly Effect song. And people are dying to hear this live. And when the album was out, they were like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> So, maybe now the, the people are ready for it. Well, maybe it happened to me with a few albums, but it kind of happens with the... Sometimes you have a joke, okay, we should make an album, wait 10 years, and then we release it. <laughs> and then people will be ready for it. But also, it's also to put people down when you release an album or don't release an album, because people are not ready for it. Because people have to be ready for everything. It's... Um, it's, it's music, heavy metal music has its traditional side, but it has its experimental side too, which were, grew bigger in the 90s. So I don't know, I think people sometimes, they were just talking out of their asses and they didn't even bother to listen to the music. That happened a lot. They us. don't, and sometimes they and speak nowadays faster they, they, than they, they think. they don't watch anything. I heard that the attention spawn for a, when I'm making a stupid film for Instagram or whatever. It's like, you know, I mean, I feel like this guy in the radio booth in the desert, is anybody listening because he's just talking to a fucking phone, you know, <laughs> and then people like it and put these fucking little icons in there, it's everything um, very childish, you know, we just, with internet, we became children again. Yeah, and we live in a different... You no, know, and, uh, and no, and all the, the it's like um, when you, I have a kid, so he wants to be accepted by me he wants to not anymore he's become a little rebel now but in the beginning he wants to have my approval and nowadays everybody's looking for a lot of instant approval and that's it's sad it's sad and it's um it's uh, you know in a world that it's full of people that's why we wrote Hermitage. i think people have never been so alone yes you know and that's a little bit what the album is about not about covid or social distancing or no, um, we are socially distanced on our own. We don't need any pandemic to do that. No, we have done it to ourselves. We kind of, we kind of are suspicious about everything these days. Last mm. question: You have a second book coming out. Yes. So first of all, are, are there any plans to release the uh, the first and this one in English? Well, um, I signed to a big label in Portugal, Penguin Random House, mm-hmm. and. Um, I'm trying to get there with them. For me, writing is my happy place, and it's a good hobby. So when I come back from a demanding tour, just the fact that I know that I'm going to spend some hours signing autographs with books and having some beers and having this really quiet author life, it's going to the bookshops, etc. It's amazing because it's really cool and it's really compatible, and it kind of puts me in a place that I like to. So and I have a lot of fun writing the novels. So I never actually thought about it. Like the next step to translate them, to get them translated, to get them, you know, printed in uh, other countries. But I'm going to try it out now, especially Brazil, because it's they just have to adapt to Portuguese, mm-hmm. and there's some demand uh, over Did there. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, the I'm other day I got uh, a message from um, what's his name, Yorgos. He used to write for him, and he works in a publisher, and he's exactly offering me to uh, publish um, the stuff in Greek. But I can publish my poetry, because that I own, but uh, for um, the other book I have to go through Penguin. Oh, yeah. Makes sense, yeah. But it would be cool, because I don't know if people will like it, because it's not really... Um, it's, uh, for me, it's to interesting do, to, 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 do to read something style. that has nothing to do with no. music, and has more to do with your fantasy. Music is always... Uh, it always showed, shows up in the 
books because you know music. And you was, have a Fer a Fernando in uh, the, your first novella, right? Yeah, he's uh, stillborn. <laughs> <laughs> Because I didn't want. Um, I'm sure that you you chose the name people, on purpose, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't. Want, I didn't want people to think that it's a book about me, and even though it's about my neighborhood and the upbringing and all the crazy stuff, surreal stuff. Um, and the second book, it's it takes place on the beach. Okay. It's about um, two sexual offenders. Okay. And, uh, then there's a popular. It's a popular justice book. It's about the true story in Portugal. People got away. Politicians got away with pedophilia. They got away. That's no, shocking. Of they got away with everything. Uh, that's so. <laughs> they so got good. away with everything. They got away so with good. murder. <laughs> so I wrote a little book um, about it, and it's. But it's. Um, you know, my books are always have this iron irony about them, but I'm, I'm learning too. But it was cool because. Um, I love doing Moonspell, but I think I always um, found it important. You know, Moonspell is my life, but it goes up to a certain point. Mm -hmm. And there's something beyond that point that I always encourage people. I always encourage Pedro to produce other bands, Ricardo to share his guitar talent with other bands like Teaching. Uh, Iris plays uh, a lot on cover bands. Hugo has his um, recording studio. And it's very important, especially in these times, to make stuff outside Moonspell that can create also some financial comfort to you, but also things that allow you to come here. And for me, it's perfect. I'm very privileged and lucky. And okay, I did the tour. I paid my dues in the US. Now I'm going to meet my readers, which are Moonspell fans, but um, a lot of them don't even listen to heavy metal. That's that's a great accomplishment, to be honest. If you if maybe, you are able yeah, to, yeah, maybe, because yeah. these days I wonder, do people actually read words or they only need to see a YouTube video? Of text? Like I say, in, <laughs> in Moonspell, you don't need to reach to a lot of people. You need to reach to the right people, you know. And the right people are reading my book. And also, believe it or not, it's a very entertaining book, especially because it's not like I cannot God. read it because yeah, it's, it's not like a gothic story. So. <laughs> People say, this is not what I expected. And this is a good thing, at least for the books, you know, because, oh, this has a lot of sense of humor. And I say, I'm, I'm not the Moonspell guy. I am the Moonspell guy, <laughs> too, but it is there, like, music and saying, you know, and with a big uh, heart we, heartbreak and death wish on stage. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I like to do it so. And literature, for me, it's my biggest influence. As big as, um, as music and Sincerely, um, it really people talk a, a lot about mental health and how impossible. And sometimes you just have to find a thing that really speaks to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that really, um, how can I say, the piece that fits in there, which something is missing. And for me, it's literature. I have I have a lot of fun with Moonspell, but I'm looking forward to go back to Lisbon to the book fair. Summertime, oh, beers, friends, books, and without having to go on stage uh, <laughs> again, you know, like um, like every night, and that keeps me going. Yeah, and I'm already thinking about my third novel, and um, I'm going to. It's going to be a very different one. Uh, it's going to be a, about um, a Portuguese immigrant that came to the United States <laughs> and then went back to Portugal trying to live the American dream in Portugal. So it's going to be... And as I'm here, I, <laughs> I looked up some stuff, but I have to go and interview him um, as well. You know, just with a bottle of scotch or whatever. Scotch just, wine. Uh, maybe, Port, maybe. I think he likes harder liquor. Okay. Wine or wine and scotch, why not? And, uh, and then I'm going to start... Um, um, that one fucking makes me happy. So... So I'm, keep doing that one. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to keep um, keep writing. I don't know if it's going to be my next career, but if it is, well, I drink to that. That's all. Thank you very much. Man. No problem. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you for coming to the US to celebrate the 30 years with us. We yeah, really appreciate this. Of course. And we were worried because we saw a posting that it will be a long time since. Uh, I think you will be, yeah. Uh, but you will. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe. maybe.